Craft Brood Sports Cincinnati Style is brought to you by Minuteman Tickets. Basketball season is in full swing, and there's only one spot you should be heading to get your tickets, and that's Minuteman Tickets. We love Minuteman, they're Ohio guys, they're sports fans, and they're not going to screw you over like other ticketing places. It's not just basketball either, they got it all. Baseball, hockey, theater, rib cook-offs, it doesn't matter. They do it all. Hit them up, MinutemanTickets.com, or give them a call at 614-943-3000 and avoid all of the fees. Tell them you heard about them right here on Craft Root Sports, Cincinnati Style. Craft Root Sports Cincinnati Style is also brought to you by More Labs. Drink one bottle of morning recovery while you're partying and bounce back quickly the next morning, guaranteed. Go to morelabs.com and use the code SPORTS at checkout for 20% off your non-subscription purchase. Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Craft Brood Sports Cincinnati Style. I am Mike with me as always is Scott. Joe over there behind the computer. Joe, how you feeling today? What to do, baby? Scott, what a week. To think they needed to record the Bengals to do that. (laughs) What the That's why they did so well, because (laughs) they've recorded the Bengals. (laughs) But they didn't. (laughs) We'll talk all about that. Awful display Jesus. in the jungle this week against the Patriots. Uh, Andy Dalton just let me down. Just everything I did to build that guy up. Ah, this this is uh. <laughs> whoops. Oh, just terrible. We got some Reds hot stove news that we're going to talk about this week that I'm super excited about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> just laughing. World Series Num- number five spot locked out. <laughs> Playoffs, baby! Woo! Here it comes. Playoffs is coming. We're also going to talk a little Xavier basketball. They played a little UC hoops. Just before we recorded this? Yeah, uh, UC we as well. To, UC also played. Uh, we've we got to discuss this. how Xavier continues to be Xavier. Xavier, yeah. And how UC has bounced back and, and gets a, a decent win after. After embarrassing after themselves a again. Really bad loss. Yeah. Really bad. toothpaste. Uh, <laughs> and of course, as always. We're going to do that hockey a little bit later on. Oh, Are you ready to do snap. some hockey tonight? I am. You prepped? I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> I've got the advanced <laughs> metrics out. We're ready to do this. Do you know how to say the goalie's name yet? No. <laughs> never going to know how to say the goalie's name. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get right into this Bengals debacle. God, when is this season going to end? Well, the Patriots this week. Everybody. Uh, it was a big time loss to the Patriots. Andy Dalton looked awful. Uh, three interceptions? Four interceptions? I thought it was four. I, I thought it ended up being four. A dude, I couldn't keep track with how often they were picking that ball off. It yeah. was terrible. And you know what the worst part was? They were in it. Like at the beginning of the game, it's like, man. They, they're giving us some hope. And then the Patriots come out in the second half and just completely demolish that team. Like, they didn't even deserve to be on the same field. Yeah, it was one of those games where it's like, oh, they they got a chance in the second half. No, 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 they don't have a chance. It's exactly what we thought it would be, just total annihilation. And, I mean, Bengals, I, it's frustrating because they were in, in the first half – at the end, especially right there, if they don't turn it over on downs and then they don't turn it over on the punt, they could have potentially gone into halftime leading. Yeah, could leading have. Leading that game. Could but have. the total momentum swing of two essentially turnovers right there before the end of the half, and it was like, okay, now they're down at, down by three, and then they kicked them in and field goal later to make it look more respectable, but they didn't ever get close to scoring other than that. Yeah, it was just one of those games that uh, even when they're in it, you feel like they're not in it. Sure. Like there was never even even going into halftime where it's like, man, they're they're close. You're still like, nah, this is this yeah. is not going to go down how I think it's going to go down. Um, so the the Patriots obviously come out and, and destroy. Uh, well, it was four interceptions, mm-hmm. four That's interceptions, <laughs> one touchdown, four interceptions for Dalton. Well, it, funny enough, it could have been one more. My and it, my favorite play of the game 
was the ball that got tipped like a mile in oh, the air yeah, yeah, yeah. and Mixon yeah. caught it and ended up making a decent gain out of it. Usually those go <laughs> horribly. Down. Yeah. yeah, usually That's normally those go six. horribly. Yeah. yeah, and it ends up being a pick. <laughs> and instead, ball gets popped up a mile in the air, Mixon comes down with it, makes a move, and then gets gets a first down Speaking out of it. Speaking of Mixon, he's 75 yards away from a 1,000-yard season. Which is so quiet because it seemed like for a while there he was going to – maybe not get 500 right. yards. Right, I mean, like, how often do we talk about at the beginning week. of the season where it was like, Mixon, when is he going to show up? Like, yeah. this dude was putting up, like, 40, 50 yards in a game, and then all of a sudden it's like, dude, he, oh, was, he, the, he was the leading AFC rusher last year. And it, it, the the way this the first half of the season started, it was literally like, is he, I mean, is he one of the worst running backs in the NFL just based on yeah. numbers? I mean, like, he was mad that people are booing and yeah. like, oh, you come down if you think it's so easy. It's like, dude, you're, and then he's, sneaking up on a thousand yards it's like where did this even come from yeah no i mean it's very quiet thousand yards but it also eh, for the most part it's a very shallow can you just stop yards. touching yourself what are you doing <laughs> you like that <laughs> no it sounds terrible S- sorry sound engineer joe furious behind the mic remix <laughs> i mean in fairness it, do the Bengals deserve any type of attention at this point? Yeah. Like, I'm almost tired of talking about this team. But except for this week. This week has been the one that's been circled since week one. The Bengals and the Dolphins. The tank bowl. The toilet bowl, baby. Yeah. And even now. Well, but I mean, unfortunately, the Dolphins, the Dolphins are, have ruined it. I mean, right. this was supposed to be two who's winless getting or the, one yeah. winless who's teams. Who's getting like, the, yeah, one, whoever the one pick? Whoever walked away the loser, walked away the winner in right. this game. But instead, it's like the Bengals would have to win their next two games and the Dolphins have to lose their next two in order for them to not have the number one overall. Right, and the Giants won last week, so that puts them a little bit like the Bengals have some cushion room that they could win this one and still get that number one If they lose this game, they lock it up. There you go. So Okay, so so. then what do you do then? If If you're Zach Taylor, are you trying to lock it up at this point? Or do you try to get that dub? Or How do I feel? I can't even describe it. <laughs> you know, uh, good. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> or do you keep doing what you've been doing all season? That's trying to win games, but because you're but mostly you're, terrible, you're like inept, you're not yeah. actually uh, going to win the games. Like I feel like that's just the route you go. It's like well, we're just gonna keep doing what we've done all season. That's not only win. got us one win, one win, uh, and it suggests that we're not gonna get one this week. So, I mean. I, the Bengals actually getting a point in this game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is really this is more or less next. a toss up, but I feel like between Miami being at home and this seems like one of those games that Fitz Magic is going to be on. Oh, he's yeah. going to throw for four hundred and fifty yards Dude, he and have leads one of his. the Dolphins in rushing. That's not even it. He's not. Even, <laughs> he's going to run all over the Bengals. That's what he's, he's going to finish with like more Lamar running yards, more rushing yes. yards than Mixon in this yes. game. <laughs> Oh, that's a good prop Mixon's, bet. Mixon's going to come up short of a thousand, and he's also going to outrush uh, the, the Fitz Well, Magic's I mean, he's still got him. next week to get. I mean, no, he I know, but I'm just saying, like, he's oh, not going to he's, he's not going to hit a thousand yards this week because he only needs seventy six. So that's yeah. not even like a great day. That's just a like pedestrian day. But Fitz Magic, Magic is also going to outpace him. So there's two things he's like not going to achieve. Outrunning the co- the opposing quarterback and not getting to a thousand yards. That's the type of prop bet we, <laughs> we need to have. In Vegas, Vegas, where are you at on that? <laughs> Who's, who has more rushing yards? Fitz Magic <laughs> or Mixon? That's crazy. But no, I seriously, I I really do think, and I, but and the Bengals can probably score. I, you know, it's not like this Dolphins team. I think this is gonna be like a shootout. <laughs> I, I mean, I think this is going to be like a 38-34 game because, like, the Bengals are going to be forced to throw the ball forever and the Dolphins suck. But, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to have one of those games where you're just like, four touchdowns, 400 yards? W- where did that come from? But, I mean, he did it with the Bucks team last year that wasn't any good multiple times. Like That's he true. He will have these random games, and the, the Bengals' defense is just bad enough that it's totally feasible. But they're also decent enough that they could completely shut down the Dolphins. Yes. Yeah. No, this game could end up 38 to 34 or 
two to nothing. <laughs> like the, the, there's nothing in between. Like this game is either gonna be super high scoring or nobody's gonna be well, able to do anything. Well, both teams, you're calling thirty eight to thirty four. Both teams are averaging, so they're averaging about sixteen points each per game. <laughs> that's where that's where these offenses are sitting. <laughs> uh, they're also giving up though. Bengals are giving up twenty five. The Dolphins giving up thirty one. There so it is. Something's gotta give. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> 38, 34, <laughs> or 2 nothing. <laughs> and both teams are only averaging like 300-some yards oh. a game. Like, just 2-2 two, two tie. <laughs> yeah. 2-2 two, two tie. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, is is I, that the worst-case scenario for this game, a tie? Yeah. That's, but I think it would be funny. Like, I'm here for whatever is the most ludicrous outcome of this game. Uh, You know, a 0-0 zero, zero tie. You want that joker. Two, you want to see the world burn. Yeah, I mean, I just want something in this game where just, like, only these two teams could accomplish something ludicrous. Or, you know, where they both put up, you know, 70 points apiece. And you're like, what? Who saw that coming? I want the 0-0 zero, zero tie. Now that you say that, I want a 0-0 zero, zero yeah. tie. I want to set the NFL record for punts in a game. <laughs> I want Kevin Huber to the, get the game were, ball. There were, there were three combined first downs between the two teams. <laughs> Kevin Huber gets the game ball because at the end of the game, he punts one and coffin corners it and pins Miami at their With one. With time expiring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like we again. We've we circled it at the beginning of the year, like, oh, this is going to be the matchup. It's going to be awful. Both, of you. and so it's like there's been all this hype, and then Miami kind of screwed it up along the way. But I'm like. The game itself in a vacuum still, still has the yeah. potential to just be god awful, and I still want that. Like, don't deprive me of that. Since well, you and, and me that's of the thing. Like, the you see, you look back at the the game against the Jets that the Bengals did win. They won that handily. It was like twenty two to six or something like that. Like they right. they came out first of all. They shut down the Jets, which I know the Jets are terrible, but I would say they have a better offense than Miami. Uh, and then on top yeah. of that, they scored pretty handily against the Jets who I would say has a better defense than Miami. So, it, like, this has the potential to be a blowout for the Bengals, but I guess it depends on gun which to, Bengals team gun shows up. Gun to my up. head, you know, and seeing as it's a Gun to my head. I, I feel like Bengals win this game. Like, just if we're all well, jokes there's, aside. There's the kiss of death yep. because the Scott Kaiser pick, we <laughs> know been never. Awful this year. <laughs> awful. <laughs> so, Bengals lose this one by three touchdowns. It's good. This is one of those games, though, that is just like all of the, the Sharks, they just stay away from. Like, they're just like, eh, I'm not touching this game. I they're threw like, it back no, in our, our show. I was no, not picking no this No good one. can come from this no matter what. Like, no matter what side you're taking, it's like, nah. I, I'm, <laughs> I just shut it down. I'm like, nope, we're not taking any bets on this game. <laughs> <laughs> Too this volatile. Is, this is the one where you show up to the sports book and you know, I would like to put 500 on Cincinnati. Really? Why don't you just go ahead and take that one back? <laughs> you just go ahead and pull that one back. I'm going to act like I didn't see it. You just go ahead and take that right back. Okay. <laughs> Mulligan. <thank> <laughs> uh, so then looking ahead at the schedule, uh, they still have the Browns coming up again. The Browns are, are in the tailspin there. Do we see any wins outside of this game that – I mean, no, this, this is, is pretty it. much I mean, it, right? I was going to say, if they don't win this game, the season's over, and then it'll end with two straight losses. Mm. Or whatever, how many ever losses they've had since they, they won <laughs> four. the one. It'd be yeah, four, so four straight, straight losses. losses. Okay, yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, well, uh, there we go. Uh, one more question. Do you think we see A.J. Green? Nope. He's. I know he's nope. listed as doubtful yeah, for no. the game. No. What? I mean, why I know, would he come back now? I know AJ wouldn't necessarily want to come back, but if you're the team and you've got this first round pick locked up, why not get AJ back on the field? Like, what? if you've got, if you lose this game, you get the first round, the uh, number one pick locked oh, up. Oh, you right? mean for the like final game? Yeah, just like, try to bring him back. Bring him back. Just do something. Well, like, two two sides have to want the same thing, and I don't think AJ's true. gonna be like, "Yeah, it's week seventeen. Let me go out there and <laughs> risk my livelihood on a absolutely well, meaningless he's, game." He's got to show something to these teams. Like, look, no, he doesn't. I can still do it. No, he doesn't. All you, you have don't to think do so. is, you think they're gonna take him on? You think he'll get this? The is type this of is one of those classic could? scenarios where you, you say, "Like, look at my resume." Like. But I don't need to prove anything. Like he's not playing for his next team. Like this isn't a guy who's like, yeah, you know, he's really got to show something because his career is not been necessarily iffy. that like, he's got to show a pro, something. No, no, but, but he's got he's a Pro got Bowl a... career, and right. all you have to do is like all he has to do is pass a physical. Teams are still gonna line up. Like, if but are they been... gonna pay what he could earn oh. if he had played all year long? That's what well, I'm saying. But, Go but, on. But, but one AJ, game, but one game isn't gonna change that. Like I no mean, matter, no might. matter what, it might. Man, he could go out there and get 400 yards receiving they're still going to be like well you did it for one game like we don't know whether or not you're healthy Ooh. they like 
I feel like if he's not on the Bengals next year, no matter what, he's going to do a show me contract. He's going to sign a one year deal somewhere yeah, where he right. like, you know, to to prove that he's still a pro bowl caliber receiver. Yeah. Like he's not going to lock himself in a long term deal because you're right. There won't be any long term offers that are worthwhile signing. So he'll go out there and he'll just sign a mercenary deal. And, you know, go out there and try to ball out and hope that he stays healthy, and that'll be that. And then he'll be back on the, the market so, the following year. Uh, you heard it here first. A.J. Green will be playing for the Patriots next year on a one-year deal. Absolutely. <laughs> good. Feel real good. <laughs> Let's talk some Reds. <laughs> and this one belongs to the Reds. Hot stove heating up for the Red Legs. Uh, look, guys. I know you like to give me crap about overreacting to Reds news, but this week the Reds have signed Wade Miley. Uh, they they got him to a two year deal with a team option for the third year. Uh, that number five spot in the rotation is locked up. The rotation is solid, but that's the problem. the The rotation I don't think was the problem prior to this signing. Like the rotation already was like pretty good. It was it, it was good at the front end. Castillo is. An ace, like that's a that's a dude, and Bauer is you have two a, a like really ace good potential guys. After that though, it falls apart. Like they're okay, hit or miss. Di Sclafani isn't a dude that you count I know, on, but they, he's serviceable. Like when you look across the National League at like and one Sonny through Gray, Sunny Gray, you don't know which Sunny Gray. I mean, he had a great year. Last I know, year, but, but I mean, if Sonny you're Gray just suggesting up. off last year, I mean, they had a pretty solid five man rotation prior to this. I mean, sure, this solidifies, but it's like yeah, but now you got Miley. Yeah, and I was gonna say this isn't anything that moves the needle. Boom. to where We're like, oh my god, now they're the favorite, like they're the favorite to finish third. No, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa! Yeah, they, I think fair. they have that's locked fair. up third place <laughs> in the NL Central. All right, here's the here's the big thing about and that's this. assuming that they can get more home runs out of anybody <laughs> who doesn't play third base. <laughs> well, here's the thing about this Miley signing that I think uh, is why he is. Has, why he's the guy that you go after for this fifth spot. Last year, he pitched 167 innings. Like, the dude ate up innings, and that's what you need with a bullpen. He, he's coming from uh, Washington? No, Houston. Houston, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was playing in Houston last year. Uh, so this is a dude that ate up innings, and that's what you need on this rotation. Like, that's what the Reds have been missing ever since Bronson Arroyo retired. The True. dude was the inning eater. Like, you didn't have to worry about going to the bullpen too early, mm -hmm. and that's now going to be Miley's role. He's not a crazy fastball pitcher. He's barely touching 90 with his fastball, like, but he's going to eat up those innings. And was left off the rosters for both the AL Championship Series and the World Series. Look, man, that's fine. I don't need him for the for the well, NLCS and like, the World Series. I just fifth, need you to get me the, I was gonna say, if he was the Yeah, because you're not going to make it there, right? <laughs> well, not only that, I mean, if he was the fifth starter, like you never are starting your fifth start in the playoffs and World Series anyway. So, right. I, I, I mean, I get that. But just in general for that spot, I mean, I guess it's a it's a, it's not a bad signing. It just doesn't really move the needle one way or the other, I guess. Like, well, it doesn't make him worse. Everybody saying this now allows the Reds to start focusing on because they didn't get any of the top free agents that they were targeting. No D.D. Gregorius, uh, no Grandall, none of those guys. The the remaining name that every Reds fan and, and that's on everybody's lips is Ozuna. I guess we'll see what happens there. That I mean... I don't I mean, have any faith that they're going to pull in. I feel like this is going like to be that. a slow play for like the next three or four weeks. Like we're, it's going to be that dead period where all right, all of the kind of biggest names have signed, and now we're just it's just going to be radio silence for the next four weeks because you've got Christmas and right. New Year's and everything, and uh, like everything kind of gets put to the back burner till right before spring training. That's when right, and so <laughs> like mid December, then you're going to start having Donaldson and Ozuna and those guys like start figuring out where they're going to land. So then, and then obviously it's a snowball effect from there that everybody else can sign. But I mean, between now and then it's just, it's quiet. Cause I mean, we talked about it last week. We were shocked because for what, two or three straight off seasons now, none of the biggest names right. are signed. And, and this year it's been board. a throwback off season where all of the biggest Who got names signed, are signed. Like right after we stopped recording last week, there was some Rendon. That, yeah, Rendon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it was we Rendon. Like, like, well, no, I mean, you we said it during said, the show. I'm like, Rendon for, just, so, yeah. just signed the, the <laughs> Angels, and I remember driving off from your house thinking, I can't believe that just happened. Like it, it happened super fast <laughs> in terms of the off season hasn't been like this in a few years. So, so you're saying this Miley signing is 
nothing to get excited about. You want me to simmer down. You want me to try to temper my excitement because I got to be honest, that rotation. Oh, right. But uh, the reason and the reason why you need to temper temper your expectations is it's good. It's really good. We talked a lot about how they just couldn't score any runs. Well, yeah, yeah. So I mean, this this doesn't help that. Like it's a fifth starter. All right, let's let's do our our crazy Vegas prop bet. Uh, how many of the Reds lineup this year beats uh, Puig's home run total from last year? Mm. I, I was thinking, <laughs> let's, he's, let's he get, was number two on the team. You want to you want to go crazy? <laughs> let's get nuts. Does does <laughs> thank you, Michael Keaton. Does Wade Miley give up more home runs, or does the second leading home run hitter on the team hit more home runs? <laughs> so, what number is higher? The amount that Wade Miley allows, or the amount that the second highest total hits? <laughs> you, you know, what my favorite part <laughs> was when they were. I was reading about the Miley signing. They were like. Miley's a great fit in Cincinnati. He's a 50% ground ball pitcher. It's like, okay, but that also means he's a 50% fly ball pitcher yeah. in a very small park. Like, also, also, I, I feel like most pitchers are just like, yeah, most pitchers fall around 50%. Right. Like, there's there's some guys that are more extreme, like yeah, guys yeah. Like, that can induce right. a lot of ground balls or they're like fly ball pitchers, right. but it's like, for the most part, everybody falls within that why 50% are you, Why are you range? bringing that That's not that up when it's like, like, yeah, it, it'd be different. It, to your point, it'd be different if they were like, he's an 80% ground ball pitcher. Oh, great, that's a great fit right. for Great American Ball Ball. It has he's to be a, skewed one way or the other for you to mention it. ground ball, uh, okay, so... The other half of the time, people are hitting dingers. What is happening yeah. here? <laughs> like, He's a fifty percent off speed <laughs> versus fastball guy. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> he I, mixes his pitches well. <laughs> he he wakes up fifty percent of the time. <laughs> Fifty percent of the day he's sleep, the other fifty percent he's awake. He, he just fifty percent of the game he plays defense. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> uh, the other fifty percent of the time. Offense. It's weird. It's a very crazy stat that this dude it could has. just be all 100% defense <laughs> if it was correct. Get out of here, you DH fan. Ugh. Ugh. I 2020 it. Universal DH. Get out. Get no. out. It's not happening that soon, but I fear that it's coming. It's coming. It's I, definitely uh, this, coming. This next labor negotiation, I feel like by 2022, we're looking at Universal DH. And that well, and, I mean, it goes to the fact they don't they have the DH in the minors. Like, if they didn't have the DH in the minors, I'd say there's a, a chance that it sticks as it is. But <sighs> just get ready for it. Uh, and in that case... <laughs> In that case, DJ Earhart. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, Joe, Joe might watch some baseball. He'll eh, watch probably not. He'll watch more than the zero games each year. He'll <laughs> tune into two. Uh, all right, let's talk some UC basketball here. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Hit it. You <laughs> see, uh, wins tonight against Tennessee. Lost to toothpaste recording. on Saturday. Lost to toothpaste. Okay, what's worse? Well, I, what do you hang your hat on more? Like, this is a great win, or man, that was such a bad loss. Man, that because, was such a bad loss. And it, the reason why I say that is because the way they lost to. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that here <laughs> in one second. But the reason why I say that is is it that bad of a loss with how crazy this college basketball season has been? You have top teams getting knocked off by nobodies. Uh, you have everybody. It feels like every team has bad losses on their record. So is that going to really hurt UC come tournament time? I mean, a loss to Colgate is yeah, a bad loss, well, but yes, but everybody's it, got that. The the reason being, they play in a conference that probably is going to send one ma- max two teams. So every bad loss hurts a little bit more because it's a little bit more glaring if, than Louisville. Right. I mean, if to, you if you're yeah. only sending the conference championship because everything's down, like it, unless they plan on winning the. Which the, the American Conference. They probably are. Like, they're probably going to win the American. But there's no guarantee. And but so that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a bad loss. They're not going to get in based on their resume. Nah, Memphis will win the American. Yeah, they're not uh, going to get They're yeah, not going to get in Memphis. based. I they're forgot, forgot They're going to lose to Memphis in both basketball and football. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> if it happens in the championship game, if it's UC Memphis in the championship game. They're totally losing it. Oh. There'll be two straight sports. <laughs> Do we have to like block off the Roebling Bridge and like prevent UC fans from heading that way? Because no, losing to Memphis I twice. Do it. <laughs> Leave it open. <laughs> what happens happens. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you got to be smarter than that. So that's uh, no. Right, I know. Let's do that. talk about this loss to to toothpaste uh, that that they had because the ending of this game 
Why don't you walk us through what happened at the end of this game? Because we we tweeted out the. I had the to walk of myself it. through it, it a few times. It was so because weird. When I first saw it, I was like, "Well, what's uh, on the surface?" You're like, "All right, Cumberland shoots this crazy half court shot," which. If time was expiring, I still thought it like it was a bad shot. Like it wasn't even a good right. Like a final second heave. It was like, what the heck kind of shot was that? If there's no time running out, it wasn't until I realized, oh my god, there was six seconds on the clock when he he heaves it up. That you're like, that's a bad half court shot. It's a stupid shot to take. Like you could have got a heck, and you could see it all over Brandon's face. He was like, what? the hell and this is the dude that uc fans are like this is the guy like, Cumberland this is, is NBA the guy, guy. like right. uc fans have told me he is going to be the best player to come out of the, in this draft and it's like uh making plays like that you sure but and i couldn't tell like his face like he looked so nonchalant about it and he looked very just like and eh, i don't really care finding out after the game him and brandon have had issues all season so far like they they've butted heads all yeah. year um he he straight up said after the game i didn't know how much time was left on the clock and i didn't know what the score was jr smith two things well i mean <laughs> it's one thing to say i didn't know how much time was left it is a completely different thing to say i didn't know how much like what the score was because the score is around it's your everywhere. face like yeah, i mean yeah. you can see the score but what a horrible look! Like it's not a good look at all for for the and, team and then, in general. And I don't know what he like what he did tonight. Like what did he do tonight? Because you know Brandon said at the game he's just like I'm gonna have to reevaluate like who's playing. Like it doesn't matter what your name is or what stat you had. Probably like it's like it, the best players are gonna be on. It's one of those like he was straight calling him out. Like I don't care but who you was are. Was he really or was this a? But let's look at the stats because that'll let's, that'll be telling. Or, yeah. If if he played like a starters minutes tonight, then it's like yeah, it was nothing. Right. It could be the Mick Cronin after the fight type thing where it's yeah. like, I took the jerseys off and right. you got to yeah, earn yeah, them back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so let's see what he did tonight. Uh, uh, 22 so minutes. He went from 31 minutes to 22 minutes. But he went from eight points to ten points, so there you go. He was also, I mean, he was also still a <laughs> starter, so it's like. He, he did start. Yeah, yeah. he did. <laughs> right. So he, whatever. Uh, Didn't really do do much yeah this is gonna be a weird thing to watch uh as this season unfolds i'm interested to see how this brandon cumberland uh, it's head a budding match I, again like just kind of finding out that there's been this friction after this game it's like wow this early between your star player and your new head coach. Well, like, it was already. He almost didn't make the flight right. to Maui or which. But again, I didn't find the that Caribbean out. wherever they were. Right, I didn't right. find that out until after this happened. Oh, it's like, it was oh, everywhere. There's this long string of things. Like I just missed that. But then, I mean, you come back, so you lose to Colgate, and then you win against Tennessee. What? Who Tennessee has now lost two in a row because they they lost their home winning streak the other night. Like they, it's because college basketball is bananas this year. Like this, oh, they lost to Memphis. Tennessee lost to Memphis, and then to UC. <laughs> American greater than SEC. <laughs> yeah. uh, American Conference, all of a sudden, best conference in the country. Well, uh, oh, Jesus, man, it's <laughs> this season. You can't predict anything. Do not. Don't even fill out a bracket. If you do, fill it out chalk and be safe because I'm just there is I'm just going to put Colgate in the final four. Yeah, like, they're, they're not even going to make the tournament. I'm just going to write them in. It's a, it's like, a I season. believe that Colgate should be here. They've got a quality <laughs> win against UC, who beat Tennessee the very next game. <laughs> it is a season that makes no sense. Nothing is is going to make sense throughout this year. Don't even like. Don't even pay attention to the the rankings. Who cares? Yeah, because well, it's going to get shaken. Like it's going to get shaken up every single week. People at the top are going to fall. People in the bottom, it, it, the 15 through 25, are just going to get shuffled around all season long. Don't fill out brackets this year. But actually, you probably should. You should go to Minuteman Tickets when they do their uh, Minuteman Madness. You should fill out a bracket right there. No doubt, Minuteman. <laughs> they've got your back. No fees. Get all the tickets. They'll get. They'll hook you up with whatever you want. <laughs> Minuteman Tickets, the greatest people on earth. So. Uh, there's your UC update. Um, we can, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk some X. Let's talk some X. You, uh, we'll get we really, and zip them up at the end of the game. Really got to get a new drop for Xavier because it's just so <laughs> quiet. Like who's just so quiet in that drop? Um, all right. So it, it, it also isn't true. Most games they're not zipping anybody up. They it's, did get a win today. It's like they're they're zipping up real slowly, if <laughs> at all. So whereas UC 
dropped a bad loss and then had a good win. Xavier missed the opportunity of a, a decent win. Like Wake Forest well, isn't, but no, it's it's, it's not, still a name, right? But it's just the fact that they come off of like it looked like they were building momentum after you know winning the crosstown shootout, and it's like all right, now they're gonna like they they played their best game of the season, and it's like all right, they're gonna kind of take off, and then they came out against Wake Forest and were completely flat. Yep, like just looked. It's not, the crosstown shootout letdown. Not, right, it, it seems to happen the every same, year. Not the same team at all, and then uh, you know tonight against Western Carolina. We're down what, 14 at one point in the second yeah. half. I mean, they just don't look good. Turnovers galore. It just, it, like, this is what we're going to get from X all season. At their best, this team can be an Elite Eight, you know, national championship, you know, conversation caliber team. Because just because of the way you stated, yeah, okay, yeah, that's like fair. the, the, that's the fair, state yeah. of the, the way things are. Yeah. I'm not saying that, like, on a, a, a perfect year that they would be in that conversation, but. At their very best, they can play with anybody in the country. At their worst, they can lose to, to anybody in the country. Yeah, they can <laughs> lose to anybody in the country, and like in not like in a good fashion. Like I mean, they just. I have no idea what team is going to show up on any given night. It's like I think that's so the worst part about watching Xavier this year is the the streakiness of the team, where it's like which Xavier shows up, and because they have the like they you know we talked about it last week. It's like. They started off as the top 25 team, so everybody recognizes the potential, and on paper, they have the talent to be one of the best teams in the country. But then they come out, like, sluggish against really bad teams, and, you know, they let bad teams hang around, or they don't, you know, there's been games where it's like, oh, they didn't beat a bad team by what you would think a team like this should beat them by, and so it's just like, who, like, who are they? I don't know, and I don't know that we'll have an answer until like mid February, which again I still maintain as far as rankings go that right most teams should. shouldn't be ranked until then anyway. But I'm like, what what team are we gonna have coming down the stretch? Is like all that matters with the Xavier team. Like in between there, it kind of doesn't really matter. But they also need to make sure that they're not like losing a bunch of games because I mean, I I don't necessarily think they're gonna win the conference. Well, so, and, and this is another year where the Big East doesn't seem like that great of a conference. Sure, you but know, I mean, like, but I for mean, the second I don't, year in a row, it's like I don't I mean, think. I, okay. But I also don't think that Xavier's gonna like just get in that large bid without having a bunch of like really like they've got to win a lot of games. Well, and, along and the when way. you and when you look at their season so far, the the two names, well, I guess three names that they've played: Wake Forest, UC, Florida. and Florida. They've lost two out of three. Right. Uh, UConn, Be, I guess you can UConn. put in there. Yeah, UConn, you can put sure, in there. But they're, they're but down. even UConn, yeah, UConn's considered down. And uh, but, but let's put them in. So you're two and two against the name teams that sure. you played. That's not good at this point of the season. Like not you, when those are all the games you've scheduled, you, right? And you have <laughs> nobody left name wise. Uh, yeah. there's there's TCU, which is not a, a name right. basketball. All, program. I mean, and we were playing in football. All right, cool. Sure. All of the names that you they think have Andy less going to be at that game in in conference. Like that's I mean, you have to win again, you right. have to win all of your conference games or, or majority of them. And I mean, I, just, I and, Okay, so in looking at current rankings for the Big East, Villanova is the only other Big East team that's, that's No, Georgetown. Oh. Was it? Oh, Butler. Butler's in there? Okay. Of course Butler is. All right. Georgetown's not ranked. No, they're not. I thought right. I saw a net limit. But, but Butler is uh, – okay, so Butler is currently at 17, Villanova at 15. Villanova just has Xavier's number, so I don't ever expect Xavier to beat Villanova. No. I, I count that as two losses right there. Once every five games, it's like, all right, right. This, is, this is it. With that, other than that. <laughs> right. So yeah. I, that's that's a team that And I, then with Butler, I expect it's one of those – One and one. Yeah, I was going to say, I was yep. like, we're going to win one, lose one. Like, they're right. not, they're, there's no way the so team's really going to sweep. So out of the two <laughs> remaining ranked teams that you have on your schedule – You're going to win – We're predicting one, one and three. possibly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> At best, best case scenario, brutal. one that and three. That is brutal. Yeah. You better win the Big East tournament. Like, you better. Or else and they you... haven't done that yet since they got into the Big nope. East. So, you know, that's another hurdle that Prep they have to the NIT. Prep for the NIT. Prep for the NIT. <laughs> I'm ready for it. I'm just preparing myself for the NIT. That's where Boo. I'm at. Uh, you ready to do that hockey? Sure. <laughs> I can't wait to do that hockey. Do that hockey, game. It's so quick. That one needs change, too. We'll get this all ironed out for 2020. 2020 is going to be a great year for Cincinnati style. We're going to have new drops. It's going to be seamless. I'm digging it. Good. I feel real good. <laughs> 
Joe's killing it. A week away, and he's like, uh, he's at top of his game, man. All I got to say to Joe is, come get me. <laughs> it was a good, really good. Uh, that's a right. that's a dynamite <laughs> drop. I like that drop a lot. I'm so glad I cut that into two different yeah. drops, because the good, really good, oh, it's perfect. All uh, right, so three and one since we last spoke. Damn. Yeah, and and they went uh, one and one on the uh, Star Wars weekend. Won the first one, five to two. Okay, suffered a lot, let down the second one, but uh, they they won the the night we did the show, and then they bounced back after losing Saturday night with a win Sunday. Um, I don't know, I can't remember. I don't. I think they were playing tonight. Go look that up. They're playing to, no, they're playing tomorrow or Friday night. So okay, yeah. So those were all the tonight games that when they, this like, releases. Sure, yeah, there you go. Uh, but And then we talked about, obviously, the Star Wars night. Now, did they wear the same jersey both nights, or was it different jerseys? Because Joe, Joe sent the, the, the picture of the Darth, Dude, Darth, the Maul, Darth jerseys, Maul jerseys. Dude, the Darth Maul jerseys were really legit. nice, really nice jerseys. And I, I meant to ask, but I can't remember what I was doing when the text came in, but I, I thought... Are they wearing those jerseys, you know, back to back nights? Because I know they do them for charity and auction them right. off or whatever. So I was. Well, I guess sure, they would. They, I mean, I guess they could have worn the same type and auctioned them off as well. But well, I just figured if you've got two back, two nights, two different teams, that there might be two different. You got to go jerseys. two different sides of right. the force is what you got to do. <laughs> they they need to go Jedi in the second game after right. going the dark side of the force. Uh, whatever, that's fair. But anyway, so uh, you know, overall for the season, they're they only wore it on the fourteenth. Oh, they didn't even wear it. They didn't even wear the themed one on the fifteenth. That's disappointing, yeah, Cyclones. That's, that's I mean, very what's, disappointing. What's the point of even doing it on the? I uh, did instead? the other team, so we we did have that uh, uh, the Batman night when the other team wore the Joker. I didn't uniform. see that. I tried that. I did try Anything? to find that this morning to see if they had an opposing, you know, an opposite. Were they jersey? wearing Jedi robes? Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> It would be hard to play hockey. They, was ju- they were just all dressed like Baby Yoda. <laughs> it's like, damn, we got beat Baby Yoda tonight. Yeah. Um, while Joe's looking that up, they they are currently in second place in their, their division, 18-6-3. and three. You know, humming right along. Uh, More importantly, what promotions do we have coming up? Uh, we Cyclones? have, like, nothing. Oh, up. we're going Nothing of that. note. They got the fireworks night on New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah, like they don't have any cool promotional nights like like we've seen from the past couple shows. But they don't have that many games left this year. They only have two left this year. Three. Four. Wait, that's the end of the season in general? At home. No? At home. Wait, no, no, so no, no, no. Left this year. Oh, just this calendar, calendar year. Yes. Like, they okay, only have okay. two more games at home. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> what well, I'm just saying, like I, I had clicked forward and looked. Like I think even if you look in January, I don't think that they have any cool promotions because I moved forward when I saw that there wasn't anything going on, and it was just like oh, throwback weekend. Oh, Teddy Bear Toss always good. They got Marvel weekend coming up in January. Okay, I must have missed that. There you go. <laughs> I didn't look that far ahead. Come on, twelve dollar tickets, one dollar hot dogs, one dollar pizza, one dollar soda, one dollar beer. Dude, that's a good night. That's a real for the, good that's night. That's for the Teddy Bear Plus Toss Teddy weekend. Teddy Bear Toss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, first of all, dollar beer night on a Friday and Saturday. Really? They're asking for problems. Ooh, that's going to be an issue. <laughs> Don't start be none, won't issue. be none night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Give it, well, pull up the roster real quick here, Joe. No. Because, I, no, I want you, we need to do this. This is going to be, this is going to be the thing until you can do it. Um, name that goalie. No, <laughs> I did. You keep bringing it up, and I'm like, no, <laughs> just I'm not gonna do the the whole goalie thing. Like I can't pronounce it. Like, like Yuko, Pekka, blah, blah, blah. like that's it. That's all I got. Like that that last part. It like I I don't even know that the first two parts are right, but the last one I'll never get. I think you got Pekka something. right. I think that was the only okay. Part cool. You got. Well, there you go. We're just gonna call you're, him Pekka. You're basically Xavier against good competition. One for three. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> They're like, uh, Pekka. Go goalie Pekka. <laughs> Joe, it, what is it? One more time, because you got it. Uka, Pekka, Lukanen. See, it's not that hard. You get you get thrown off by the double letters. That's what it is. Every time you get he, distracted. Th- there are back-to-back Ks, double Ks in There's, all three names. Yeah, every double name Ks. has double Ks. Also, you've got the double U's in the last name. That's also difficult, but... It's really not that bad. You could you could do it. Come Pekka. On. One more shot. One nope. more shot. Come on. One more shot before we end the show. Yuko, Pekka. It's not you. <laughs> it's ooh. Uka, Pekka. 
Lukanen. Lukanen. <laughs> Uka Pekka Lukanen. I was going to go. Uko. <laughs> UPL, baby. UPL. That's my dog. UPL. My dude, UPL. <laughs> That's where we're going with from now on. UPL. <laughs> oh, shoot. This has been a really fun. <laughs> You can give me three weeks to get that. I'm you, still not going to You it. did that hockey. I'm proud of you yeah, for doing that gosh, hockey. Sure. Uh, I appreciate the Cyclones update. It was uh, it was very in-depth. Very in-depth. You just you just have a certain way of breaking down this team. <laughs> Nobody uh, that, else can muster. Yeah, that I, I just don't. Uh, I, I don't know. By the way, uh, I, I didn't look. I think the, the Bearcats play their bowl game on the 2nd. I think it's January they do. 2nd. So we won't have another show between now and the bowl game, but our, our next show that we have will break down what happens in that game against Boston College. But before we get out of here, just real quick, uh, UC is going to beat Boston College, right? I would expect that. They're yeah. only a seven-point favorite. That's kind of surprising, but I'll still they're going to be. They're gonna be right, right, Joe? They're going to beat Boston College? Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, all right. Uh, well, this has been a really fun uh, Cincinnati-style show. The last Cincinnati style show of 2019. Uh, this has been a fun time. 14 of these now in the bank. So thank you guys for tuning in, uh, for sharing out the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to keep doing these, um, you know, in the new year. Till the I, wheels fall off. <laughs> I'm having fun doing that hockey. I was going to say, I was like, when hockey season's over, I don't know what we're going to talk about, <laughs> but there's that. <laughs> Uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. Tell your friends about Cincinnati God, style. When this show is just baseball, what are we going to do? Bro, I got you. I got you. <laughs> no, you don't. That Mike. show is just oh going to be me being super amped and you two being like, Mike, slow down. For 45 minutes, though. And you say super amped, but once they go on, you know, a 12 game losing streak, I'm done with this team. And that's when it's Mike, slow <laughs> down. It's a long season. <laughs> we are going to struggle during the warm up. NFL, NFL is always in session, baby. And we got FC Cincinnati to talk about during that time. We're fine. We're fine. We can fill 45 minutes. Okay. It's going to be a lot of Star Wars talk. <laughs> going to have to be. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Be sure to follow the show in between shows at Craft B Sports. You can follow Scott at Scotty K underscore junior. You can follow me at Mike Burlon. Follow Joe at Joe Goalie 4. Hit up the drunk line whenever you want for all of your hot Cincinnati sports takes. 44037Drunk. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight and all this year. We'll see you guys in 2020. Cheers, everybody. We out. Goodbye.